Hey gang, welcome back to the big board. It's Kev. Uh, having a chat, uh, more of a, just observations about Under an Iron Sky and the scenario that I'm actually just in the very early stages of turn one. It's a campaign game that is focused on a, a more of a what if scenario around the, the, not the revolt, but the protests that started under the Solidarity Movement uh, in Gdansk, and uh, I'm sure I pronounced that incorrectly, so uh, all of the folks that get cranky about that, go ahead. And <clears throat> and then what 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 would have happened if uh, you know Gorbachev was deposed and Reagan was more strident and things of that nature? So I'll be doing some write-ups on the gameplay and all that sort of business. But I thought it just might be interesting for your good selves to have a look at the map and the setup situation. It's an identical setup to the campaign game, except at the very beginning, it's considered that every uh, Warsaw Pact country has uh, gone into a uh, revolt mode, basically, and there are consequences for that with the, with the, the, the game. So the first thing we have to do in a revolt situation is before the game starts, we're going to roll to see how many revolt markers per country are placed on the map and depending on where they, and they have to be in a city or an urban area and you can put more than one and then the Soviet's job will be then to bring forces to bear to remove those revolt markers simply by attacking them. Uh, and it'll be, you know, if there's four revolt markers in a city, it'll be the combat factor divided by four if there's one it'll be divided by one etc you can bring air support in subject to which nationality uh who's fighting who type of thing uh I, I, from the quick read here I, i'm i'm now paraphrasing rules obviously so it may not be entirely accurate but obviously uh east east german aircraft are not going to fire on east german folks but the soviets have no no such restrictions. And uh, so in Poland, uh, then, you know, so there are units that will then potentially defect, right? So let's, let's zoom in here and we can have a look at this area, right? Uh, <clears throat> so these units will defect. Uh, on a die roll at 1d20, 1 through 10, they're going to defect. And each turn we're going to also be rolling for additional revolts so additional locations and more more people revolting and all the rest of it so i i went back and did a little uh, you know some brief homework on the solidarity movement and what occurred and when and the uh, you know the momentum that picked up from like valence's uh uh initial requests for the right to form unions and all this sort of stuff which was all rejected and there were a number of protests and things of that nature that at the point when uh the solidarity movement was allowed to form unions within i, I think i'll say it's a month but it might have been a week within a, a month 80 percent of the workforce had joined the movement and joined their union and then began obviously protesting for more, for more change, for more uh, freedoms, for more rights uh, as the working working class, and better economic, more economic reforms. Because there was a, uh, a, a they were in a crisis mode in in Poland. So lots of bad stuff happened, and I think this when I say bad stuff, it just more economic than than violent, right? Uh, as that movement grew, when the movement was when the attempt to put the movement uh, occurred, uh, attempt to put the movement down occurred, a general was appointed, a Polish general was, was appointed, and there's some discussion about whether he was a good guy or a bad guy, because he immediately imposed martial law, which have then, of course, brought on an extended period, numbers and numbers of months uh, of riots, and there were 5,000 people arrested in, in one night, I believe, when the martial law was initially uh, 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 kicked into gear. Imagine that. Imagine having a list of 5,000 dissident folks that uh, you were ready to go pick up. Staggering level of uh, surveillance on the, on the populace, right? Kind of scary. Uh, so, you know, so the evil communists are, are, are forced 
to deal with this ever widening revolution in <clears throat> in Poland. And this game is taking that concept and applying it here. And as uh, as revolt markers are placed on the maps, uh, there's some revolt markers here and here. As they're placed on the maps, military units, i.e., divisions, are are then forced to make these one d one d twenty rolls. And if they, and as I said, if they convert, all the units that were in that hex that are not a division are eliminated. So Helos, HQs, Artie, uh, Doohickeys, uh, AA, SAM sites, and things like that, gone. Uh, it's assumed that the loyalists have uh, you know, taken over and destroyed what they can't use, basically. So, so it, seven divisions across uh, the, the four countries, one, two, three, yeah, four countries, have uh, revolted, and all the units in their hexes, all this stuff here, has, has been uh, eliminated and removed from the game, which is interesting because it is opening up potentially some some air corridors that will allow the uh, the NATO forces to participate. Now, of course, this is just the early start of the game. We're not even in war game war game. We're not even in the war, the war turn one. This is all sort of the pre the preamble to. I'm trying to get that. Uh, it's kind of following me, isn't it? Uh, getting these lights out of the camera is challenging. Uh, what, was, what was I saying? So we're not actually, the war hasn't started yet. We've got to go through this escalation exercise where NATO is allowed to, to fly missions over into uh, the Warsaw Pact countries. Uh, but uh, if the, it's intercepted by the Soviets, whoever shoots first or shoots that bumps up the escalation level, and then beyond that, then that changes the rules of engagement, then it goes up to level three, level four, and then we go to the war turn one, which will be all that, uh, the movement and all that sort of stuff that you would normally do under an iron sky, or sort of the, the pre-war um, move to battle. Here's the difference though, right? Because we've got these uh, defected units, they don't just sit there on the board. These guys, these guys are now moved and played by NATO. So NATO can, uh, NATO can, you know, potentially run around and eliminate uh, SAM sites. More importantly, they can go sit next to other divisions, wherever they may be. There's another one there, for instance. They can go sit next to that division at the end of the turn, and uh, and and then it'll have to that unit will have to roll for defection. There's four criteria for when when you roll and don't roll uh, as a defect as a unit uh, to see if you defect. So we you know we're we're, we're moving units sort of behind the lines while while NATO is uh, preparing for what arguably is you know sort of a, a re not really a rescue mission I wouldn't call that you know it's probably an intervention right it's an international intervention to protect the populace of these revolting nations who are uh, trying to throw off the yoke of communism or uh, and and while that's all going on of course the soviets in this particular uh, world view they are uh, a hypothetical view they 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 were preparing to knowing that this sort of uh, unrest was occurring and be, and escalating they were looking to try and get ready to have their last gasp their big push into the western nations and and uh, i guess claim some more buffer zone or uh, acquire economic riches or whatever it is the communists thought they were thought they were going to do although uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you know, in my worldview is that they probably never really intended to invade uh, but, but anyway, in this case, they're distracted by that, by this, all these revolts and restricted by all these revolts because they've got to put these revolts down. They've got to kill or remove the, uh, the revolting revolters and, uh, and get, uh, get, the, get, get into a situation where they uh, either destroy or basically destroy these, uh, these defected units as well knock out the, uh, the revolution uh, entirely in each country before the entire government is overthrown, at which point all of those units come off the board. So now, uh, does, do the Soviets want to entertain beginning World War Three? And if they do, without the extra 15 or 10, 12, whatever it is, divisions of uh, Warsaw Pact units, 
Do they really want to do that? Or do they want to do something different and maybe start with a nuclear escalation? Uh, who knows what could happen here, right? So now we're, uh, we got a whole new ball of wax and uh, it's pretty interesting. And we will be uh, digging in on this. So this is just kind of a little placeholder. Uh, I'll be posting this much, much later. We're just post ice storm right now. So I'm just, uh, just finished setting up and doing the, the initial revolt rolls in turn one. And hopefully I'll be posting some more video and there should be, if I have the time, a nice comprehensive uh, written AAR with lots of pictures and stuff. All right, you guys go have a good day. Roll dice.